Hi guys! Thought I would show you my electron microscope before I button it up and put it back together. I've been refurbishing it the last couple months. This is an Amray 1800 field emission. Here's the console. This thing looks really high tech with all these buttons. It'd be great for a B sci fi movie. So if I ever do one, you'll probably see this in it. There's where the screen is, where you see your uh, scanned image of your sample. Some other instruments that I haven't put on the machine yet that sit over there. So the high voltage supplies and some of the low voltage supplies live in the console and the computer for the system is in there also. And it hooks to the column through this huge bundle of wires, which boy that was a, a challenge trying to figure out where they all went. And this is the column. This is under high vacuum. This is where you put your sample. This is the stage. If you were to vent this to the atmosphere, you would be able to pull this open. There's a place to put a pedestal with your sample on it. The pedestals look like this. The pedestal sits directly in the center of the column. So the stage allows you to adjust XYZ rotation of the sample and theta tipping. There's some controls for an aperture. There is a gate valve here to isolate the vacuum in the column from the specimen chamber. So if you're going to change your sample out, you isolate your electron gun from the atmosphere. This uh, is a big deal because uh, when I when I started to fire this thing up, the electron gun, which sits up here, had um, gone to the atmospheric, atmospheric pressure, and it took about two weeks to pump down to where I can use it. So you don't want to uh, open the specimen chamber without closing that gate valve. All right, the theory of operation on this is the uh, electrons are streaming down from the top through a, a little tube here. There's some electrostatic lenses that help focus it down to a point. There's some magnetic deflection and astigmatism adjustments. So the beam is focused and swept and then your sample is down in the center of this and the beam is sweeping back and forth hitting the top of your sample. Some electrons are being absorbed, some are bouncing off. Once it bounces off, that reach a detector. This is one of the detectors. I have a couple others that aren't installed on it right now. This particular detector uses a scintillator which when the electron strikes it, it gives off a little glint of light and then behind the scintillator is a photomultiplier that multiplies that signal up to a point where the console can determine if it's a bright or dark um, spot and it'll draw the pixels on the screen. Okay, so the vacuum system for this, it has to be under a very high vacuum. So it starts off with a mechanical roughing pump. This is an oil-based vein style pump. So it has rotary vanes that are dragging air through this pipe and then venting it through that little blue mist filter there, sticking up. So this pipe here runs into a big can full of cement and that's just to keep the vibrations of the motor from making it all the way to the microscope itself. Okay, down under the sample chamber is a turbo pump. That's this guy here, not really in focus. That is, if you were to take that off and look down the barrel of it, it looks very much like a jet engine. It'll have stators and rotors and molecules that find their way into the mouth of that thing will get sucked out and then pushed out to the roughing pump. Some of the other pumping schemes on here is there's two ion pumps. Molecules that find themselves in here get sucked into a magnetic field, twirled around and crashed into the sides <clears throat> of um, the ion pumps. So this is for the intermediate column. This is keeping the vacuum from the specimen, I mean the, the molecules from the specimen chamber from making it all the way to the gun. And then there's a dedicated gun ion pump there. Okay, um, on the front we can see a diagram of the vacuum system. And so this has a computer 
that does most of this automatically except for open the gate valve for you. So if it was at atmospheric pressure, you would hit evacuate. It would first pump down the specimen chamber with the mechanical pump, and then it would turn on the turbo pump when it was low enough, and it would monitor, monitor that with the thermocouple gauge which um, is good to uh, about, let's see, what does it say here, one micron of uh, a vacuum. Once it gets to uh, a low enough vacuum, then it switches over to another vacuum gauge. You can actually see it here. This is like a triode vacuum tube. <clears throat> and you can uh, use that to measure down to 10 to minus 6 tor. And then once you reach the, the proper pressures, it'll indicate to open the gate valve, and then you can start imaging. And so, this is what I'm going to show today. I'm still learning how to adjust the, the microscope, but getting some pretty good images out of it now. So this is the filament out of a burned out light bulb. So I cracked open a light bulb, put it across a 9 volt battery until the filament burned out, and then I stuck it in the microscope so we could take a look at it. Okay, so you can see here it's the little corkscrew looking type filament, it's very small. This is almost a hundred times normal size, and I'll zoom in, enhance. Okay, Keep going 172, 250, starting to see all the white fuzzy stuff. Well, it's not white on the screen because this is just a green screen monitor. Um, since we're imaging with electrons and not photons, there's no real color um, as we would think of it if we looked at it with our eyes. But if you had looked at this with your eyes, you would see white fuzzy stuff. That's this through here, and this is the filament through here. You can see a definite separation of the uh, tungsten oxides versus the, uh, the tungsten itself. So let's keep going in here see what we can see 645 times. Now I'm going to switch over right now I'm in a uh, regular scan. I'm going to go to slow scan so that we can get a better image. This just spends more time on each pixel location. It integrates over time to get a more accurate measurement. Keep zooming in here it's a thousand times. Oops, press the button right in the middle of the scan. We have to wait for it to come back around. Right. 2,300 times. It's starting to get out of focus. This would be the point where I would start twiddling all these knobs. And uh, I'm not an expert at that yet, but I'm getting there. So the things that you play with quite a bit, there's the acceleration voltage. This is the acceleration of the electrons going down the column. Then you have final lens and condensers. It's all controlled through here. These are electrostatic um, lenses to help focus. You can also move the, the beam around a bit with um, beam alignment. And there's astigmatism in the uh, the beam. So you adjust that out with these knobs and then this is adjusting your magnification. Alright, all right, I guess I'm just rambling now so I'll just uh, call it quits there and uh, hope you enjoyed this little tour around an electron microscope. Um, I'll do more videos when, when I get better at, at working with it. Alright, enhance What's going on? There we go. Alright, bye guys.